Attention! Although my content is usually family-friendly and suitable for all ages, Phoenix Wright Justice for All is a game that has been rated T by the ESRB content rating system, and as such, the videos in this Let's Play may contain blood, mild violence, and or suggestive themes. So, viewer discretion is advised. Let's go out and bring justice for all! It better be for all! <laughs> Hey everybody! At this point, I don't even know what we're gonna do. <laughs> Welcome to the final episode of Phoenix Wright: Justice for All. It's fin gonna be a long one. It probably. will be a long one, but it'll be a good one. And I think I picked the best place to stop in the middle. So I worked the question. Adrian Andrews is my client. What was that? <laughs> Adrian Andrews is my client. Who is this? No, it's not old the man. It's an old man. That's true. <laughs> he is an old man. It's true. I always Ooh. pictured him to have this voice. Yeah, no, that sounds better. No, if there's ever an old man character that's not running a noodle shop, I'll voice him and do that voice. Oh, hey there. Hey, everybody. No, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> I already know if whether if, if there is an old man, and if there is, that voice will not fit them at all. Okay. Okay. <laughs> all right. As I've already stated, Adrian Andrews is my client. Meanwhile, poor Pearl is like in turmoil. She's not she's even not existing a, right she's now. She's not existing right now, but she'll come back and be like, Naya! What is it, Mr. Wright? If I press him the wrong way, it might raise suspicions on his end. But I have to do something to waste more time. Um, witness, about requesting a hit. Yes. How much is your fee? <laughs> do you want to kill someone? I see you are also quite a dark-hearted <laughs> man, Mr. Attorney. Huh? If you would like to talk business, we can do so after the trial. <laughs> ah! No, no, no! I'm not thinking of hiring Mr. Wright! Y yes You, you, you... You want to kill me? You want to kill me? Tell me! What? Why would you think something like that, you're on? Guilty! Mr. Phoenix Wright, you are hereby declared guilty! <laughs> Witness, let's continue. Why did you disclose the name of your client? They are your client, are they not? Pete, you cannot be afraid of dying and be a judge. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot overlook tampering with the crime scene. Oh my gosh. I would think that most people wouldn't be able to overlook a person hiring another to kill. If I had a problem with such a fiend, I wouldn't be very effective at my job. That's true. Ah, yeah. Well, a change in occupation might be good for you. However, I will say this. Even though I am the one that does the deed, my clients are always the real guilty party. That goes without saying, Mr. DeKiller. And their fate is to live with the knowledge of their guilt on their shoulders. Yep. However, my client this time thought that they could run away from their guilt. My client did it to frame another for the crime. Are you talking about the button and the knife? Yes, and my business card. Oh, this card. So that no one here has to waste their time, including the police. I always make it a point to make things as easy as possible. You try to make things easy? My business card makes it very easy to identify who carried out the service. He's pretty devoted to his work. But to disregard everything, to go and stab the deceased with a knife, and even hide my card from sight, that is something I cannot overlook. Hmm, it's really hard to tell if he's being truthful or not with him without him being here. That's the annoying thing, is I'm like, I could see this being either way. I could see Adrian Andrews have done it, and I could have seen Art on guard doing it. Obviously he was like, <laughs> like swirling his brandy at us. Like, confessing everything. Right. Who knows, maybe there's like some other big thing that we're not, we don't know. Probably not. I don't know! <sighs> Could be. So you're saying most clients wouldn't do such a thing? That is correct. Usually most people try to create an alibi for themselves. If you should use my services, Mr. Attorney, I would suggest you plan for your alibi too. Ah, uh, no! I already told you! I have no intention of ever using your services! Why does he keep looking at me like I'm the one on trial here? <laughs> oh my gosh. Adrian Andrews already knew from the very beginning that the Juan Corridor was dead. From the very beginning? That is correct. From before my client visited the room. 
All of my clients know precisely what the situation is at all times. I wonder if that's really true. That's odd. But even more appalling is the creation and planting of the knife and button. So why do you think your client did that? What do you mean by why? Well, fiddling around at the scene of the crime is pretty risky. And why would someone who has requested a murder go to the crime scene anyway? Hmm, that is true. I assume it was probably done to frame Mr. Omgard. If that's the case, then why didn't the person just request that you do it? Sadly, that is not possible. Huh? My job is to kill, that is all, and to leave my business card behind, naturally. The business card is so my clients may escape blame. To protect them is my duty. Hmm. Even if they say it's for revenge, setting someone else up to take your fall? That act is what I was referring to when I said my client had broken the rules. And that's all you have to testify? Yes, and I pray that I will never be called to the stand again. Again? As in, you plan to continue? I must, as I have yet to find a person to take my place and become the fourth successor. Actually, how would you like a new life, <laughs> Mr. Attorney? <laughs> Excuse me? Ah, no, no, no! I'm fine, really! Are you really now? I wonder what kind of man the judge thinks I am now. <laughs> what are you going to do now, Miss Phoenix? Miss Phoenix? I was trying to say Mr., but it just... <laughs> Maya Phoenix. doesn't call him Mr. All I can do now is expose the lies. That's true. However, you realize that that will be very bad for our client, right? <sighs> I'm so confused. So am I, Phoenix! But the one thing I know for sure is I can't let this trial end yet. Ugh, I just feel like we made the wrong decision now. Well, I have the save state. I know. But we're not gonna go through the whole thing again! Are we? It might make a deviating path or something. How many- how many endings are there? I'm not spoiling how many. Ah! There could be like six endings! We'll be here for like two hours! That'd be so annoying. Alright, well, this is the one that they were saying it's odd on. Adrian Ar Andrews. She didn't- no! Adrian she Andrews. 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 No, she- she didn't know. I mean- How so? Well, she came in, she was like, <gasps> He's dead! And then put the wine glass down and then moved everything and started looking for So you think it's the wine glass then? Maybe. Besides, there was that whole thing where she dumped the water. Not dumped the water, but she like, spilled, spilled the flower spilled vase. Spilled the water. Yeah, spilled the vase on the guitar case. The main thing I was going to pull up, and it wasn't on there, was that he was like, oh yeah, normally they have an alibi, but my client didn't do that. And I'm like, but Mr. Ongar took a nap for like 30 minutes, you know. Right. We can't. Well, Ongar also had to be at that show in the first place, so. Yeah. Alright, let's try the wine glass. Okay. Oh! Oh, that actually is the right one. Thank you so much for taking the time to testify, Mr. DeKiller. What is the meaning of that attitude? When Adrian Andrews entered the victim's room, your client had no idea Juan Corita had been murdered. But how? How do you know that? From this wine glass, your honor. The glass? Mr. DeKiller's supposed client went, thought Mr. Corita had only fainted. Which is why this glass of tomato juice was poured for the victim. Hmm. But isn't that just a part of Adrian Andrews' calculated plan? No. That is not possible, your honor. This glass bears the fingerprints of that person. Had this been planned, they would never have left their fingerprints behind. Unless they were stupid. I see your point. Mr. Edgeworth, what is your opinion? Strangely enough, I had the same exact thought just now. Witness, how do you explain this strange phenomenon? Uh, isn't it a waste of time to ask about such a minor detail? It's not a very important point anyway, correct? I'm afraid you are mistaken. If Adrian Andrews really is your client, as you claim, then your client should have had knowledge of Mr. Corrida's death. If not, then that can only mean that Adrian Andrews was never your client at all. That's a very big radio, now that I think about it. Yeah. It's like the size of, like, a head. <laughs> How strange. Yes. 
Why is it that the attorney has yet to raise an objection at this absurd situation? Phoenix, if the killer figures out what we're up to, we're in real trouble. Yeah, I know. Objection! Mr. Edgeworth, I'm surprised! You know you can't say things like that without any evidence! Ah, uh, sorry. Th that sounded like an awfully weak objection to me. <laughs> anyway, I am positive there was a contradiction in that testimony. The prosecution requests further testimony concerning when, when the request was taken. Very well. Right now, I have to buy us some more time. Gumshoe is in a ditch. <laughs> How are we going to get anything? <laughs> this is why I think we have the completely wrong choice here. <laughs> While we wait for the items the killer left behind to get here. I just know that the very outcome of this trial lies with those items. Uh, the other thing I'm trying to figure out, too, is, um, was Gumshoe with other people when he was trying to- They had an investigation team. Yeah, but he literally swiped the stuff when they weren't looking and then drove off, because they would have taken them to the police station rather than the courtroom. It would have been faster at this point to do that, but anyway. <laughs> um, so, but they're still looking around, then, for his hideout. So there's are, there is yeah. people out there. There are people out there, yes. Meanwhile, Gumshoe went, like, a hundred <laughs> on a regular state street, and then, like, hit a car. 90 miles an hour down a dead-end street. Yeah. <laughs> request taken. This request came to me, oh, about a week ago. It? It was a request for my services on the night of the award ceremony. Oh, shoot. I should have saved at the start of this testimony. Whoops, my bad. I should have ended last episode after the previous testimony. Okay, we met? We met at a certain bar to discuss and finalize Ooh. a few matters. That is what occurred. I trust my memory, and I believe wait, I have wait, made wait, no wait, mistakes. Wait, wait. How old is everyone? If it's a bar, if it, there's anyone under 21. Okay, on guard and Corrida were 21. Adrian is 23. The killer is obviously older than that. Obviously older than that, okay. I think everyone is old, over 21 okay. except I want, Maya I want and the big plot twist to be like, Oh yeah? Well, Mr. Ongar's birthday was on the day of the like, award ceremony, so he couldn't have gone to the bar because he couldn't drink. <laughs> 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 he could have been... That would have been really funny. Hmm, so you physically met your client, huh? That is correct. Meeting Ooh. one's client is the first step to building my trust, in my opinion. Okay. I see. Well, Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. What? It's like... Um, remember Fantastic Beasts, where they're at that, like, illegal magic bar? Oh, yeah, the, uh, the speakeasy. Yeah, the speakeasy, and then they're like, oh, yeah, well, how about you give me, you know, three yeah. Dumbledore cards for your beer? No, give, give me 60 portions. Yeah, 60 portions, like that kind of thing. Yeah, I wonder what kind of bar you have to go to where an assassin and his client can meet. That's a very seedy one. Yeah. The request came about a week ago. I can't believe it was that... One week ago? Are you sure? Normally you plan this like several months in advance. Or he, a couple weeks he, ago. He's a pro. Yes, I am quite sure. I, of course, had my own preparations. And I was bravely, barely able to finish. When you request my services, Mr. Attorney, I hope you will keep that in mind. <laughs> Mr. The Killer's just like- Please! Stop! <laughs> in any case, my client this time had a very specific date and time in mind. A specific date and time? He's like, I know I want to take a nap then, dude, so can you, like, uh, kill the dude then? Oh, that's the thing. When he met the killer, did he do, like, the she scarface thing? Or was he literally like, oh, dude, man, like, it would be really great if you could, like, murder the killer. I think he's totally boxed out my mood, man. I think he would do a mix. <laughs> I think once he gets in the CD bar and they're like, and, and they're like, oh my gosh, is that the awesome Ongar dude? And then he, like, flips back his hair it's and no, like, no, nope, that's, that's not, not him! him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's just some guy in cosplay. And they're like, what What are you gonna order for a drink? I wonder what kind of drink. Chocolate to milk. Killer. Oh, to not, killer. Not on guard. To killer. To water. Killer. Just water. I don't know. Tea with brandy in it. Yeah. <laughs> I, think did, did, a, I think that's a drink. I don't know. Did you ask why on that specific night? No. I tried to fulfill all the conditions of my client's request. But as for why, I only had my suspicions. Your suspicions, huh? Press fervor, let it go. I don't know. Let the storm rage on. So what are these suspicions you had? Why did your client request that night? I'm sure it was all for the bear. The bear? The bear? <laughs> My client spoke of it. 
I'm sure there will be a bear-shaped figurine in Juan Corda's room. There was actually like 500. It was quite annoying to get the right <laughs> one. <laughs> I would like you to retrieve that item for me. He must be talking about this bear puzzle. This is very confusing, to say the least. Inside that figurine was a suicide note. Naturally, the victim brought it with him to his hotel room. He was planning to publicly disclose its contents at the press conference, after all. That is correct. And if I had not done the job that night, I would not have known where that bear figurine was. I see. Well, Mr. Wright, was the testimony just now of any importance? Yeah, important. The testimony just now has made one thing clear, and that is... The client knew the secret of the bear figurine. Huh? Why is everyone so quiet? Mr. Wright, I think all of us already knew that. Uh, oh, really? Witness, please continue with your testimony. <laughs> uh, nothing happened? We met at a certain bar to discuss and finalize a few matters. So, S so you physically met Adrian Andrews, right? Of course I did. What was that? What was with that brief pause? Press further. Witness, I would like for you to give us a few more details. I always meet my clients as a matter of principle. I have never taken a request by telephone or mail. That is actually smart. And why is that? That's because I value the trust between a client and myself above all else. Plus, who knows who, what weirdo could call your number accidentally? Yeah. Like, if it's like, hey, I'm a telemarketer or whatever. Or like, you know, little, um, Toby... God, his mom's phone was like, Hello! I I'd want like to, to order you. your services. Very good. <laughs> yeah, like, where, like, you don't want to... To me, you. age eight. Please meet me at the local bar. To <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, to me, why did you call this number? Oh, nothing! The only way to establish that is to speak to the client while looking them in the eye. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, was the testimony just now of any importance? I wish I could ask him, like, what color I? <laughs> Of course it was very important, Your Honor. If Mr. DeKiller had met his client before the murder, then it's unlikely he is mistaken. Hmm. So you're saying that his client really was Adrian Andrews? Ah, um, I guess so. You see, it is just as I said. Yeah! So lost. Who the heck am I supposed to be helping here? Calm down, Phoenix. Think carefully and relax. How do you relax? How do you relax in this situation? We've got Maya almost dead. We've got Adrian Andrews, like, about to crumble and cry because she might get killed. It's like... Yeah. This is ridiculous! Now then, would the witness please continue? I hope I never get kidnapped. I hope... I think everybody hopes that. But, like, for real. Yeah. This is why society is weird. That is... That is what occurred. I trust my memory and I believe I've made no mistakes. Cool. You did. So your client was Adrian Andrews? That is correct. Well, he says the two of them met. But if they did, then there shouldn't be anything wrong with the killer's testimony. Well, there doesn't seem to be anything strange this time around. Prosecutor Phoenix! <laughs> you have to draw more information from him, but you can't draw his suspicion. If you can do that, you should be able to find a flaw in his testimony somewhere. Talk about a delicate balance. I would say this is the toughest testimony in the game to figure out. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, well, they met up in an illegal bar, and they, um, talked, chatted. We needed a... They met at the bar. He, um... It took him barely enough time to get all the preparations. Yeah. I'm just gonna say this. This will take you so long to figure out, so I'm just gonna go to the end, go if that's alright. Because this took me ages. Okay. You physically met Adrian Andrews, right? You need to repress the statement? Oh, it's worse than that. Of course I did. You have to press it five times. What was the brief pause? Witness, I would like for you to give us a few more details. I always meet my clients as a matter of principle. I have never taken a request by telephone or mail. And why is that? That's because I value the trust between a client and myself above all else. And the only way to establish that is to speak to the client while looking them in the eye. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, was the testimony just now of any importance? Do you have to say no? Okay. Why he meets his clients is not important, and that wasn't the point. Witness, please stop sidestepping my questions. Wh what do you mean by that? My question was, did you really meet Adrian Andrews in person? 
I have already told you, Mr. Wright, I did. It was only through talking with him face to face that I began <laughs> to trust him. <laughs> okay. Wow. No, I'm done that laughing. Was, that was a guffaw right there. <laughs> <laughs> that was a bird squawking. That was a bird squawking. That's when I thought I can trust this person as a client. Hmm, it's true what they say about talking face to face. What well, is Mr. Wright, him? was the testimony of any importance? No, 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 it wasn't. I was so sure there was something, but I can't get a good grip on what it is. Mm, I guess it wasn't all that important. Very well. Phoenix. Y yes. What did you What did you hear just now? Oh. Uh... <laughs> Clean out your earwax and pay attention, Phoenix. You're letting his words slip by. Um, I guess I missed something back there. Witness, please continue your testimony. <laughs> That was great. If I heard what I think I, I know, I know what my laugh sounded like. You know, like the Burt, like, saw moldy blast! <laughs> yeah, like from that. Mary Poppins. From Mary Poppins. If I heard what I think I heard just now, then I think I've got him. Your Honor, I believe the testimony just now was of the utmost importance. Huh? Really? Yeah, I would not have found If that's out. the case, witness, please include the statement just now in your testimony. Very well. Thank you. From the moment I saw him, I thought, I can trust this person as a client. <laughs> oh, but, as, but as we now know, that was not how it turned out, correct? What do you mean? Adrian Andrews turned out to be a client who couldn't stick to the rules, right? Well, yes. I suppose you are correct. Hmm. So I would like to check one last time. Are you sure your testimony is accurate? Oh yes, absolutely. No, not absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Wait, no, I did a lot of pres- I just presented my attorney's badge by mistake. <laughs> what do you think about the witness's statement? Uh, well, uh, da, da, da. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Wright, please stop sounding like a dummy. You're not on the dunce patrol. <laughs> the dunce patrol? Well, well duh. duh! Well, well duh! duh. <laughs> Oh yeah, we also get his profile now. Which is different from John Doe's. <laughs> That's funny. Objection! Oh, well, I want to know. What? In the Japanese version, aren't names gender-specific by nature? Sometimes. There are but some are there exceptions. But are there gender-neutral names? There are gender-neutral okay. names. I okay. Because if not, how would they have done this in the Japanese version? There's gender neutral names. There has to be because when they had like Robin in the, every Fire Emblem game, they would have had to have had a name that could have worked for both. Oh, okay. So I think there's some. Or there's some where it's like, you could name a guy Hiromi, but it would be kind of <laughs> weird. <laughs> All right. I would like to go over this one more time. You met Adrian Andrews at a bar and took the request at that time? Yes, that is correct. And that's when you thought he was trustworthy? How many times must I repeat myself? Yes, that is correct. I'm sorry, but that is an impossible tale. W what Shelly De Killer? You have never met the real Adrian Andrews. I bet you I know what this was then. What? She was like, hey, I need you to come here, and he's like, okay. And then he met a different person. Okay, you're under the assumption that Dakar is telling the truth. He's completely lying that he's his client. I think I think it'd be funnier if that was the case. Whatever. Well, why would you why say would that? Why would you say that? Because you made one very big slip up about her. So what is the issue? What did you just say now about her? If you had ever met Adrian Andrews in person. One look would have told you that she is a woman. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Let's break the transceiver! Uh, order! Order in the court! Mr. Wright, what is the meaning of this? This witness testified to the following, that he always meets face-to-face -face with his clients when taking their requests. But he has never met Adrian Andrews in person. Yes, Your Honor, that is exactly the point. That means Mr. DeKiller's client could not have been Miss Adrian Andrews. Um, is that oil? It's leaking oil. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of funny. Mr. Edgeworth, I understand your logic on this one. However, why would the assassin make such a basic mistake? I believe it has to do with her name, Your Honor. Her name? Yes, Adrian Andrews is, without a doubt, a very adra 
androgen in its name. Hmm, yes I see. Unluckily for Mr. DeKiller, the entire time he was on the stand, no one had stated Adrian Andrews' gender. And so he simply picked the wrong gender to go with. W what What is going on? Judge, you don't Sh think. Shall we do killer? This court demands an explanation. Um, uh, I think somehow I must have mixed up this client with another. So does that mean you do remember something about different now? Yes, of course. Please, if you would allow me to testify once more. Ah, I know he's just going to spit out more lies. It's probably in the trial, Phoenix. Come on. Very well, but this time, please give us the truth and nothing but the truth. At the same time, though, it could just be like, well, the entire investigation team gave up because they went looking for gumshoe. And now they're at now Burger killed. King. Now they're at Burger King, and now Maya's gonna die of starvation. Thanks, police force. Thanks, police force. Request taking, part two. Yes, now I remember. I took that request by mail. There have been times when I took a job without having met my client. The request was for the murder of Juan Corda and two or three other small things. Two or three other small things? Or, you know, just kill this other person and this person and... And oh, pick could... me up some Taco Bell. Yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of handing the bear, he's a candy in a bag, like a takeout bag. <laughs> Here's your roll of money. It really was Actually, just... Oh, what if that's like... He, like, hands people like, Oh, yes, take out from Outback Steakhouse. He had poisoned it. <laughs> <laughs> it would be so bad. When I saw the name at the end of the letter, I thought my client to be a man. That was very sexist of you, <laughs> to kill her. Maybe. Well, hmm. at least today. So you took this job know, through a letter. Classes. He didn't mention anything about a letter in his earlier testimony. Which means he is definitely lying. Be careful, Phoenix. If you break the assassin's testimony completely, it's over for us. I know. I can't make him suspicious, but... I think we're okay. I like... We can do this. As long as he's standing there across from me, no matter how strong of a punch I throw, he'll counter it. And all the fangirls freak out. I don't understand why people are like, Oh my gosh, Phoenix and Edgeware, it's, it's so, so canon! It's like, no. Yeah, it's like, no. It's like, no, there's literally nothing in the series that yeah. like, even hints towards that. Yeah. Not to, well, no, I'm not even going to say anything. Now then, let's begin the cross-examination. You're like, what's Edgeworth's dad that doesn't make any sense? Well, Edgeworth is canonically asexual, so he's not attracted to anybody. Well, that makes sense. He's kind of the loner. Dude. Or maybe he's not canonically, but never in the series does he show interest in any male or female character. So. Yeah. Well, I took yeah. that request by mail. But didn't you just say that you always meet your clients? Yes, I suppose I did say that. However, there are some clients for whom a meeting is simply not possible. But didn't you meet your client this time? No, I did not. Mr. Ongar was in Switzerland. <laughs> oh, come now, let's stop with this game of cat and mouse. Hey, yo, dude, could I, like, uh, meet you? <laughs> Using your silkiest voice is not going to work on me, Archie. <laughs> 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 Alright then, just cough it up and confess! Mr. Wright, you can't badger a witness with such harsh words. Harsh words. Uh, you're a lawyer, so behave like one and present evidence instead of mindlessly yelling. Now then, do you have any proof that Mr. Killer met with his client? No. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Unfortunately, I don't have any proof. Hmm, I see. Then your line of questioning was just another waste of time. Sadly for us, Your Honor, that is the nature of right and wrong. <laughs> There have been times when I took a job without having met my client. And why could you not meet certain clients? Recently, I have been receiving more requests. If I meet, met each and every client, I would lose some nice business opportunities. <laughs> but if that was the case, you'd be popular. And you can't be a popular assassin. <laughs> oh, imagine him saying, Popular, I'm going to be popular! <laughs> It's just, he's just like walking down the street. He's like, hey, Shelly, man, what's up? Whoa! Yeah. <laughs> well, okay, maybe at the illegal bar, he's well known, like, oh, hey, Shelly, your usual. Yes, that would be good. I would like my brandy and tea. <laughs> maybe. Nice business opportunities. On top of which, the times have changed. It is now the age of information and computers, correct? Well, I have joined the times and now take requests via electronic mail. Oh! <laughs> Who calls it electronic mail anymore? 2000s. Electronic mail? Do you have to mail that in a special insulated envelope? Ah, uh, I'm very sorry. I despise the shortening of words. 
What I meant by electronic mail is what is commonly referred to as email. Email? In a contest of mimicry, the judge would beat a parrot, hands down. <laughs> Ahem. Anyway, so you took this job without having met your client, and... The request is for the murder of one court, and you two or three other things. What do we for? Two or three other things? Yes. And what were these other things? A few other things that have nothing to do with this case. Hmm. So yeah, get me some Taco Bell and a Starbucks coffee. What should I do? Should I let him slide with that? Blizzard. It'd be really bad if I pushed his buttons the wrong way and he gets mad. He's not gonna pop out from behind the witness stand and kill him. No, but he might kill Maya if he's like, wait, he's trying to get on her guilty. Oh, uh, I don't know. We'll be fine. Well, for now, let's make, like, Elsa and let it go. The killer sounds like one sharp man. Oh, he's sharp. I should try to find a better way to do this you're without an making him look suspicious. And you're well known. Clearly, you're sharp. Let's continue with the testimony, witness, if you please. When I saw the name at the end of the letter, I thought my client to be a man. So you're saying that you never saw your client's face? Not even once? I did once. When you met... It was when I went to give my client the figurine. You would know that hmm. it's a boy. Yes, then. I see. But Miss Andrews was wearing a mask at that time. A mask? The Nickel Samurai mask, I'm guessing. What about that time where you got the huge swirl of cash? <laughs> you know? Yeah, people are conveniently forgetting about that. Mr. Wright, what do you have to say about this? Do you have any problems with this piece of testimony? Yes! The huge roll of cash! One thing does sort of stick out at me, Your Honor. Witness, I think you most definitely saw your client's face. Let's recall Mr. Power's testimony. After the award ceremony, I went by myself to Matt's room. Go into the bathroom. Yes! See? Matt was standing there in front of his room, still in his nickel samurai costume. Matt gave the bellboy a tip. But, without his mask on. You received quite a large roll of cash from Mr. Ongard. At that, at that time, he was not wearing his nickel samurai mask. Woohoo! Uh -huh. Order! Order! Yes, now that you mention it, I do remember that. Witness! Yes, that night I did wander the floor as a bellboy. I received plenty of tips that night for carrying juice to the various rooms. Is that so wrong? Huh? The man who gave me that tip was not my client. Oh, right! Just give thousands of dollars in a <laughs> roll of cash! He was probably just a very generous person. No way! I'm sorry, but sadly we are not nearly so generous here. If I could receive large rolls of cash by simply bringing people things on trays, then why on earth would I stand around here prosecuting? <laughs> You've said this before. Oh, the deja vu, and it isn't his salary and more than enough for one man. <laughs> hmm. And where is your evidence that the large roll of cash was not in fact a tip? Come, Mr. Edgeworth, show me the money. What? <laughs> Mr. Attorney? Y yes you know, I think your line of questioning has been a little strange. Yeah! In fact, I would say you don't seem to believe Miss Andrews is my client. Oh, no, it's not like that at all. I just think lies aren't a good thing, you know? Oh, I know, and I agree. Lies are not a good thing at all. You're lying to me! I think we are on the same page now, aren't we, Mr. Attorney? Remember, if I feel threatened in any way, I am free to cut contact at any time. I'M SORRY! PLEASE FORGIVE MY FOOLISHNESS! <laughs> hmm... If only you were this apologetic <laughs> all the time! <laughs> anyway, I do not see a huge contradiction here. Therefore, you may continue witness. We've pretty much reached the end of our rope here. Huh? Seems like we're still okay to me. And that's exactly what is so bad. At the rate we're going, we'll end up completely destroying Mr. Killer's lie. If we do that, you already know how serious of a situation that will put us in. Uh, oh, yeah. All I can do now is pray that those items reach us in time. Let's go back here and press more. Two or three veins? Alright, let's ask more about this. Whether or not they're related to this case is for the court to decide. Mr. Attorney? Y yes? 
Everything I have said from the beginning has been nothing but beneficial to your client. Which is why I wonder what is pushing you to continue with this cross-examination. Could it be that you are planning to betray your own client? That's... I smell the stench of a backstabber. And should you turn out to be one... Wait! Uh-oh, this is looking really bad. I shouldn't press my luck. Alright, I have to think. Is this worth pursuing? Here's the deal. Probably whatever he took, or whatever he did, were those two or three items that Gumshoe took. Mm. So that might be really important. So you want to press for her? I mean, we might as well try, because we'll go back. Really Witness, bad. this is a very important matter. Please cooperate and tell us what these other jobs your client requested were. If it's truly that important, I suppose I don't have much of a choice. The bear figurine. The bear figurine? After the assassination of the target, I was to find that figurine. I was told that this job was just as important as the actual killing. And where was that figurine? It was inside Mr. Corridor's suitcase. And then, what did you do next? I handed it over to my client right away. You gave it to your client? Interesting. Hmm, this information certainly sounds important to me. Witness, please include what you just stated in your testimony. Great! As you wish. That means I love you, <laughs> from Vincent <Vincent's laughs> Brown. <laughs> One of these was to find the bear figurine and give it to Miss Adrian Andrews. She was literally looking for it, though, when... Right. I found this figurine at Mr. Ongard's mansion. If you gave it to Miss Andrews, then what was it doing there? I was waiting there for her there. That was also part of the plan to frame Mr. Ongard, I'm sure. Hmm, that makes a lot of sense. Well, Mr. Wright, do you have any problems with this piece of testimony? I mean, the problem being that she was like, I went into the room to look for the bear, it wasn't there, mm -hmm. that rhymes. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll have to go back to that. It's no use. As long as I can't put my finger on this central problem here, pressing this witness anymore would be extremely dangerous. <sighs> It appears that Mr. Wright has no problems. Well then, witness, please continue. So DeKiller says he gave the figurine to Miss Andrews. But I know somewhere in that statement there is a contradiction. And yet, I know that if I present something trivial here... He will cut the connection on his end. If you want to make a strong point, Phoenix, you have to present strong evidence. She's right. So now what, Dr. Wright? Witness, let's go over this one more time. You gave Miss Andrews the bear figurine, and she told you to take the bear and wait for her at Ongard Mansion. Is that correct? Yes. Where are you going with this? Well, I think maybe you might have remembered a few things incorrectly. W what? Phoenix is being really good here. He's be he's not being like, you're lying to kill her. He's like, to kill her, I think you might be forgetting something. Like, let's just clarify this for the yeah. court. Which is really good on him. It's a battle of wits. I can't let up on him. I don't think it's possible for Miss Andrews to have been the recipient of this bear. She was looking for it. But I don't know what that would mean. Just the bear? Let's try it. <laughs> Shall we to kill her? If you had really given the bear... Oh, that's actually the right one? Yeah, that is the right one, because she was the only one who knew how to open it. Remember? That's true. That had Wait, to have been I it. Do... Okay, I wanted to do the wrong one first. Do the other bear. Roar! I'm a bear! <laughs> so, I'm what do you think? He can't see it! Witness! Mr. DeKiller! Oh, I'm sorry. I went to visit the water closet for a second. What? Huh? Uh, Mr. Attorney, I think it's time I stated this in terms even you can comprehend. If you ask me any more of these pointless questions, there will be no mercy. <clears throat> now, I would like to move on with my testimony. I thought he was going to be Mr. Attorney. How do you do... Okay, it's actually the suicide note that I thought was the only one that worked. Shall we to kill her? If you had really given the bear to Miss Andrews, then this item should not have been inside it. This item? I see where you're going. 
Yep, that's where I'm going. Where's everyone going? Do I need to pack a suitcase? I'm going to Florida. Your Honor, please think back to Miss Adrian Andrews' testimony. And I was going to burn it for her sake. If even for a single minute this bear had actually been in Miss Andrews' hands, I'm sure she would have taken the suicide note out and burned it. Order, order, order! So that's where you two were going. So by the very fact that this suicide note was still inside the bear, tells us that your client didn't know how to disassemble the puzzle. W which means... It means, Your Honor, that it is impossible for Adrian Andrews to be the client. Woohoo! I do like this music. Oh, order! 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 Uh, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Yeah, what's up? I... I'm sure I mentioned this before. How I hate traitors above all else. Come on, man. I think your cross-examination has clearly demonstrated something to me. You, you must wish to break your end of our agreement. No, that's not... That's enough. If that is your intention, then there's only one thing for me to do. W wait please! Gentlemen, ladies, please excuse me. I have a matter that I must attend to. N no please not that. Please wait. Mr. Attorney, bring this trial to a speedy end and I may stay my hand. Otherwise... <laughs> what in the... Mr. Wright, are you... Mr. Edgeworth? Yes, Your Honor. I didn't understand this witness's outburst just now. Do you think there's a need to hear more testimony, or is this enough? Well, we should. Edgeworth, we can't do this! If we keep this up, Maya, she'll... Uh, uh, the prosecution? I... What has come <laughs> oh over Oh no! It? Even you are? Oh no, the judge. The prosecution rests. What is going on around here? The prosecution has no further questions, Your Honor. Wh what? Everyone gets fired from their jobs after this. Well, I never thought I'd see the day. This is a most unusual situation. If the prosecution rests with no further questions, then the prosecution has failed to uphold its stance. If that is the case, then even though I am reluctant, I must believe that Mr. DeKiller's testimony is accurate. That would mean that Shelly DeKiller's client is Adrian Andrews. So we're back where we started. We basically just had 30 minutes of nothing. Nothing, yeah, basically. Arrgh! Mr. Wright? Y yes, Your Honor? If I end the trial here right now, then your client, Matt Ongard, would be declared innocent. And in his place, Adrian Andrews would be charged with murder. <laughs> Miss Andrews would be charged with murder. The prosecution has no further questions, so we will now hear the defense's final remarks. Ah! Bailiff, please bring the defendant Matt Ongard to the stand. No! Items from the killer's hideout didn't make it in time. We tried as hard as we could, but it looks like our time has run out. I can't believe it. The outcome now lies in your hands. Thanks! No pressure! Or anything! Hi, bud. Dude, did the old guy finally decide? To be honest, I can't think of you as a truly innocent and good person. You have done enough evil to drive a woman to suicide. Yeah. But, at least on the charge of murder, it would appear you are innocent. Thanks, man. Ha! <laughs> Thanks. So, I guess even the old fuddy-duddy figured me out. M mr Ongard? You were as atrocious as a lawyer, weren't you? Giving your client away like this. And that refreshing like a spring breeze crap. It's just as atrocious, don't you agree? Hi. Anyway, get on with it and pronounce me innocent already. Right, Mr. Lawyer? Come on, just... Should I side with justice, or should I save Maya's life? You better get on guard a guilty sentence, okay? But... 
But if I did that, Maya will die. But if I say he's innocent, then this Andrews will be charged as the murderer. Do I say he's guilty or not guilty? Either choice I make, someone's life is going to end. Come on. It all hinges on what I choose. Watch. I bet I know what's gonna happen. Now the Mr. They're gonna be like, it's called, uh, it's not called Apollo Justice. It's called, um, Ace Attorney Justice for All. And they're gonna be like, the real ending's justice and Maya dies. That's what it's gonna be. I bet ya. <laughs> Let's hear the defense's it's final so statements stupid. on this matter. Come on. If the person who hired the assassin was Adrian Andrews, then you are quiet. Mr. Matt Ongard is innocent. Well, how did he get the brandy in here? <laughs> There's no need to ask, old man. After all, my lawyer is going to say what I want, aren't you? Right. I can't. I can't do this! But I have to decide something. I can't count on the evidence to help me anymore. I have to listen to my heart. My client, Matt Ongard, is... Really? Okay, Choose so, Marty. <laughs> so, number one, we had 30 minutes of nothing. If we had done the other one, it would have just jumped to this. I think if we did the other one, Edgeworth would have forced him to continue testifying okay. anyways. Okay, okay. So, here... So, choose. Wow! And no safe state. No! You're so cruel! 